What is up guys, welcome to another video and today we're here for some more Need for Speed Heat content. And today we're going to be answering the age old question, what is faster, dr drift or grip racing in Need for Speed Heat? Now, before we go ahead and get into this, I want to say thank you to EA for inviting me out to play in Need for Speed last week in Guildford. I got plenty of footage, uh, unfortunately, and this is a bit shit, a lot of my footage corrupted from last week. Uh, so what I'm going to be showing you in this video is a, bit, a little bit different to what I'm actually talking about. I did do a test in a Polestar 1 uh, that was full drift and full grip. I took them around a the track, I actually recorded it, um, but then the footage corrupted, so I don't have the actual specific footage. But what I did do, and thank f I did, otherwise I would be so, so lost right now, is I made a note of what the times were in my notepad before I, you know, went ahead and tried something else. So we do have the actual times written in my notepad, but I don't have the gameplay, which is really, really annoying. I wanted to actually do a side-by-side -side comparison and show you guys the direct differences of grip and drift, but unfortunately, since I can't do that, what we're instead going to do is just talk about it, because, you know, if life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Now, honestly, I am just as upset as you guys. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about Grip and Drift. Uh, I've also got some Grip M3 E30 starter car gameplay in the background, so it is relevant. It's not just, you know, random stuff. You will see in the background, and I'm going to talk a little bit over this gameplay, of just how much how, how much harder it is to get this car into a drift. Now, the car you're seeing on screen, like I said, it's the starter car, but it's got full grip um, assist settings in the tuning controls. To be more specific, I'm talking about the live tuning controls, which you can see right here. But there's different levels to how grippy you want your car to be. Obviously, if you want your car to see, still be a little bit playful, uh, you can turn off these settings, but then go ahead and put full grip tyres on, or for a full grip differential on. And there's certain things you can do to kind of change the build and make it kind of how you want it to be. We're going to talk about all of that in this video. It sounds a bit confusing, but just let me explain. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So, earlier on, I mentioned that I I made a Polestar 1, a full grip build, and a full drift build. Now, with certain cars, it only goes to certain areas in the performance matrix. Uh, this this is the performance matrix. It's a little square where you can see the little dot goes. When I was racing full drift, the little dot was there. And when I was fake racing full grip, the dot was there. Now, some cars won't be able to do certain things. Like, the Polestar 1 is incapable of going to full drift because that isn't what the car is made for. It's made for full grip but I just want to make that abundantly clear before we go forward some cars won't be able to go full drift just like some cars won't be able to go full grip I imagine the front wheel drive cars in this game are really going to struggle to go full drift as where some of the all wheel drive cars are really going to also struggle to go that way as well anyway that's enough for me rambling you guys are probably curious to know what the time was uh, in that Polestar one during my testing uh, and when all the full drift setup was on that car it did a time of 2.32 however around the same track and honestly the difference is a bit astonishing like I wasn't expecting it to be so big uh, when I had the full grip set up on the car it did a, a shocking time of 217 217 that's like 50 15 seconds faster than the drift build. So for those people wondering, is grip really that much faster than drift? It really, really is. It's not one of those things where, you know, they are minute differences and, you know, grip, grip is a little bit faster than drift. It is a landslide. If you do play in grip, you know, like online in any capacity, you're always going to have a ridiculously huge advantage than, you know, playing in the drift handling model, and that's just how it is. Likewise, if you try to drift, uh, uh, you know, a full grip car, that's not going to work either. It really is a night and day difference from Need for Speed 2015 and Need for Speed Payback, and that's something which I was really happy about. Now, with this being said, you don't really need a full grip build to enjoy the game without, you know, having break to drift elements, you know, in impeding your gameplay. Now, keep in mind, we played the game for about, I want to say, six or seven hours. Uh, so I wasn't sitting there. I haven't got like a day's worth of playtime yet. This is first impressions. But from what I've played so far, it does seem like even with the starter car gameplay in the background that you can see, if you just whack on traction control, if you, you know, put all the sliders over to the right and you make it a full grip build, you're going to have a really hard time getting that car to kick out unless you're really trying to make it kick out and that is kind of the main takeaway from this video the performance customization and the performance tuning are key to making your car how you want want it to feel and I know loads of youtubers and loads of press and loads of everyone has said that previously about payback and about 2015 
but I personally never did. I feel like this is the first time for a while that I've been able to say we can actually play a Need for Speed game, you know, without breaking the drift. Even when a car is full drift, you won't actually need to break to make the car drift. This is going to sound a bit weird, but let me explain. So instead of breaking to drift with a full drift car, you will actually just go into a drift depending on how much angle you put in with your stick. Um, a full drift car will struggle to go in a straight line if you're really pushing it, especially when you have like ultimate upgrades on it. It gets a bit ridiculous at that point. I messed around with an E46 M3 and it was genuinely one of those things where I was spinning out and I don't think I've done that in a Need for Speed game in an awfully, awfully long time because you genuinely can spin out in these drift cars. It's not as easy as it has been previously and I think this is something which the community are really going to come round to. Now overall and I think with the physics and stuff this is kind of going to be the final curtain unless anything changes in the future. What I will say is it does feel a little bit odd. I think this is a deeper issue to do with you know frostbite as an engine or something across those lines. It just feels a little bit odd. Sometimes it doesn't feel like you're controlling a car. It just feels a bit you know foreign other games i'll play them and it's like i know when the brakes are gonna give way i know when the you know the the car is gonna spin i can tell it i can tell when the car is gonna spin because i have i understand how cars work and the control feels like that if that makes sense however there is definitely i'm not gonna say it's huge but there's definitely a learning curve with this where it's gonna take a little bit of a while for you to understand how the physics work now i'm not saying that it's gonna be like 2015 where the cars are gonna go all the way to the left randomly but what i am saying is that it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to just because it is something completely new pleasantly surprised i think the community is gonna be happy with what they've seen and what they're gonna play with come november i honestly think it's a fantastic uh, you know step in the right direction um, and I just show yeah I think overall people are gonna like it I, I think the racing especially has a new lease of life for me the drifting is a lot harder than the racing uh, I think that's one thing to take away from this video as well I really struggled with the drifting and I'm not sure whether that's because I didn't try any cars with maximum power outputs but it's gonna be pretty hard from what I've played so far as where the racing is really easy to pick up and play the drifting is not the case not the same it's, it's a little bit harder than that and it also makes you know Know, building your cars a completely different experience. I'm going to talk about a bit about this in the future with a performance upgrade video, um, but it's got to the point now with how in-depth the handling model is or the performance upgrade system is, your car will either have to be a, a cop you know, build where you're going to have to prioritize making your car stronger instead of making it lighter and faster, or it's gonna have to be a drift build, which is gonna have to then focus on having more drift parts in there than grip parts, but then if you are going, if you wanna go off-road, then you're gonna have to put off-road parts in there as well. There's a whole bunch of things which are gonna come into play with Need for Speed Heat, which we've never seen before, and I'm really excited for. All of this then mixed with the fact that we have high heat races, which are only available in, you know, the dark zone when you're late at night, so it's just gonna add a whole new element to Need for Speed, and I can't wait to actually get my hands on this game. It's impossible for me now to go to any other Need for Speed game, uh, like in recent memory from like 2015 or Payback, having played Heat now because it is just ridiculously good. Anyway, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have been awesome. Stay safe and peace.